Don't worry, I understand your problem viewer. You want a good budget B650 motherboard, but you don't want it to be too budget just to show off that you do have money to waste. That is where the ASUS RG Strix B650A gaming Wi-Fi comes in, which will cost you a whopping $280. I'm assuming it costs so much because they had to make the box bigger to fit that entire name on it. So it's far from being the cheapest B650 motherboard, so what exactly do you get for that? Well, not much. Starting off with CPU power, here you get 12 plus 2 power phase. And that in itself is honestly kind of disappointing. Now I yes, I know that for a lot of people it just won't affect them at all or they won't even notice unless they're an electrical engineer or they have nothing better to do with their lives. But it's still a step down power delivery system compared to some other more budget B650 motherboards such as the Eurus Elite which has 14 phases instead. Add to that the fact that you're only getting a 8 pin and a 4 pin for the CPU power delivery as well. But oh well, maybe the PC expansion is going to be a bit better and honestly it's alright, you do get a primary 16x slot that runs at Gen 4 rather than Gen 5, but that is to be expected from B650 non e boards. And apart from that, you also have another physical 16x slot that actually runs at Gen 4 4x speeds, and two tiny 1x Gen 4 slots as well. That is all pretty fine, especially for people who are fine with not having a PC Gen 5 slot for when PC Gen 5 cards finally come to the market. But here's the thing. At a similar price, B650 e motherboards do start to appear already, and those are going to have a PC Gen 5 slot. On top of a lot of other features that this motherboard also doesn't have, but oh well, moving on to M.2 storage, here you have three slots in total, with the primary running at PC Gen 5 speeds and the other two running at Gen 4, which again is absolutely fine and about what you'd expect from a B650 motherboard. Though we do sadly only get four SATA connectors, which for $280 is, well, not really acceptable. Anyway, moving all of that aside, let's move to the one thing that always makes my blood boil, because I'm just that sad, the Ria IO. Here it's, well, not great, but not terrible either, with seven USB Type A ports in total, which is a bit on the low side for such an expensive moonboard. Again, keep in mind that motherboards like the Gigabyte Aorus variants have like 11, even in the most basic model switch generation. And other motherboards in that high $200 range are also not far behind. So while that's kind of disappointing, you do at least get two USB Type-C ports, with one running at 20 gigabit per second and the other at 10. Then what really cracks me up is that one of the USB Type-C ports is awkwardly placed where the optical spidiff usually is. Like, <laughs> excuse me ASUS? Couldn't you have moved it literally anywhere else and just put, you know, optical spit of there instead? That weird oddity aside, the rest of Rio is also completely fine and box standard, with integrated HDMI DisplayPort, 2.5 gig Ethernet, Wi-Fi 6E, and as you probably noticed, five audio jacks but no optical spitter. So hey, that's at least one area where this motherboard comes ahead of Gigabyte, who don't even have five audio jacks on the most expensive motherboards this generation. So yeah, the rear IO is actually pretty fine, even if you might find yourself running a bit low on USB Type A. But that all leads to the main question, Who's this motherboard for? Because no, it's not a bad motherboard, but at $280 it has some serious competition and it doesn't do enough differently to warrant that price for many people, especially seeing how people like Gigabyte, MSI and ASRock are doing some amazing things at even lower prices. Though there's probably actually one thing you've noticed about this motherboard that probably will make it worth it for quite a few people, and that is the colour. And when it comes to motherboard options, white motherboards still remain a minority. Is there a ratio undertone to that? Please don't tell me there's a ratio undertone to that. So for people who are planning on doing a white build, this is one of the best ways to get a white motherboard at a still somewhat acceptable price. Even if you are sacrificing a lot of features that even cheaper motherboards than this one actually have. But if you still want to get it, then make sure to use our Amazon links down in the video description below. And while you're here, make sure you check out our Patreon as well, because even a single dollar a month truly goes a long way. I'd also like to thank my extreme patrons, Gavin Burns, Ryan, Oki B, Justin Rage, Ella Vroniak, Barlash Roker, Max Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Lance B, Jesse Herbman, and Shannon Odgun. Down there, you still can find our merch store, our Discord server, and our social media links as well. But anyway, that's that. It's I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.